CNBC has released multiple previews of their documentary about Ryan Cohen titled Making of the Meme King. Let's watch the first of these previews and then I want to mention a few things after that. Ryan Cohen has emerged as a pretty interesting figure as well. Never talk. I did not know who Ryan Cohen was before GameStop. There are people who made fortunes thanks to him. What do you think that Ryan Cohen is doing? I have no idea. Ryan Cohen is a man of mystery. I've never met him. I don't believe I've ever even heard him speak. He doesn't like to show any more cards than he has to. He's a contrarian, independent thinking, independent minded leader. 30 something entrepreneur who essentially took Amazon on successfully and built out Chewy to the great company that is today. Somebody without a college degree can become the chairman of a public company of the scale of GameStop. Came upon newfound fame by being the meme stock king, by being the Pied Piper of Wall Street. And the biggest winner is Ryan Cohen. Ryan Cohen saw dollar signs instead of doom. Where's Dog. Ryan Cohen when I need him? He's accumulated fans and almost like a, a cult-like following. My understanding is the Reddit community generally loves Ryan Cohen, hence the moniker Papa Cohen. You'll see these guys reacting to these tweets like they're secret codes. In terms of him being a meme lord, I don't know. If I was Ryan Cohen, I wouldn't want that to be my claim to fame. Ryan Cohen's stake in Bed Bath & Beyond, he's now cash out of his entire position. Bed Bath & Beyond shares cratering 40%. Should you expect the SEC to get involved? It seems like Ryan Cohen is kind of using people to make money. Every story needs a hero or a villain. Ryan very much filled that role. I have a few issues with this. First, I respectfully disagree on the idea that Ryan Cohen is taking advantage of people to make money. I don't think that's the case at all. I remember Ryan's interview with GMEDD where he explained in detail that he is, as Larry pointed out, a contrarian entrepreneur. He likes to look for opportunities that everyone else is avoiding. A great example of this is Chewy. When Chewy started, people thought Ryan was crazy for selling pet food direct to consumer and competing with Amazon. But yet, Chewy was a great success. And so taking the knowledge he gained from Chewy, Ryan has invested in multiple struggling retailers in the hopes of improving those companies. It's not like he's investing in random companies here to pump their stocks. No, he's investing in companies that are retailers because retail is his area of expertise and he is trying to improve those companies. Take Bed Bath & Beyond, for example, and his investment in BBBY stock. Ryan Cohen bought a substantial stake in the company and he sent a letter to the executives of BBBY. He offered straightforward recommendations on how the business could be improved and ways that the company could provide additional value to shareholders. And for the most part, the leadership at BBBY were not interested. They did not want to make the substantial changes that Ryan suggested. So, of course, Ryan sold his stake in the company and not long after that, Bed Bath & Beyond filed for bankruptcy. Now, put yourself in Ryan's shoes for a second. If you bought a substantial stake in a company and you offered advice on how the business could be improved, but the leadership basically said, nah, we're not interested, what would you do? Would you continue to hold the stake you bought in the company, or would you sell it, move on, and put that money to work somewhere else? After all, if the company is not willing to change and improve, then it makes sense for you to just move on. And so, I don't blame Ryan for selling his stake in the company. And on that note, I have a very big issue with Melissa Lee referring to Ryan as, quote, the Pied Piper of Wall Street. If you don't know what a Pied Piper is, here's a definition from Merriam-Webster. A Pied Piper is someone that offers strong but delusive enticement, a leader who makes irresponsible promises. Personally, I don't think Ryan is offering delusive enticement or making irresponsible promises. Ryan has had great success in retail, therefore Ryan invests primarily in retailers because retail is his area of expertise. Ryan then tries to help the companies he invests in. He tries to help them improve their business and provide additional value to shareholders. That's it. It's that simple. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And if a company refuses Ryan's help, then why should he continue holding a stake in that company? It doesn't make sense for him to do so. I could keep going, but I think you understand I have some serious disagreements with some of the ideas presented in this documentary. Speaking of which, Making of the Meme King airs Tuesday, June 6th at 10pm Eastern on CNBC, and 
And the very next day, Wednesday, June 7th, GameStop reports Q2 earnings. So we've got an action-packed week ahead. I'll be keeping an eye on both of these, and I'm looking forward to earnings given last quarter's gray earnings report. And that's it for this video. Please leave a like on this video so we can get this information out to more people. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.